Hi there, well I've had a right old time messing around with limit switches and in this video I'll uh, tell you about the trials and tribulations I've had with them. So in my last video um, I was trying to get uh, one of these uh, limit switches working which was from O's Nest to plug and play end stop. I, did, I didn't realise at the time that um, these basically out plug and play for the controller I've got that are for a different controller but Having put a continuity tester on, I, I was able to work out with the, with the switch up, V and S um, was in an open position. So that's the uh, white and the uh, red wires, uh, so no, no circuit running. But when um, the switch was down, V and S would close up, which was good. Now, the, the opposite um, happens with G and S, so with the switch open, uh, G and S you get a circuit so that's uh, these two right hand pins and uh, with it pressed down G and S open now um, I realised at the time well after, after getting sort of some excellent sort of feedback I realised that $1.21 wasn't set correctly in Gerbil and you need to set it to 1 to enable hard limits and there's a really easy sort of screen on the uh, controller software that you just tick a box basically say enable hard limits and I was I, I proved that it worked um, using uh, a normally open um, circuit however I, I got some more feedback basically saying that you're better off wiring these in serial um, in a normally closed um, position so connecting wires uh, G and S uh, with the switch up and the advantage of doing that if you wire them in series um, if you get a break in the in the wires or anything like that the controller will recognize that and it will stop working so it is really good practice to do that I spent a day wiring these up in uh, series and I just couldn't get it to work and uh, I know you set dollar five equal to one to say that the pins are inverted but it just won't work for me I sought some advice um, on the open bills uh, website and the documentation and uh, also from who's nest who's nest sent me this diagram here uh, which didn't really help me a lot and um, on the open bills documentation um, they were basically suggesting that you need to sort of wire in these these in a, a normally open position in uh, parallel so I've got limit switches on both ends of the each axis so um, for example this is on one axis so to uh, put another limit switch in here what you basically do is um, connect the wires up again into that particular thing so you have two whites going into uh, the left hand and two reds going into the right hand one um, and uh, having done that um, and spending another day wiring it all up um, it all worked and uh, the I'm, I'm sure that you can get them to work in a normally closed position but there are warnings um, in the open bills documentation um, basically saying in connect wiring can short the uh, plus volts so the central pin has got voltage in it and this shows you them uh, again wiring the um, black box um, switches um, up and uh, they use voltage in them and I think the reason to have voltage in there is to um, sort of try and address any signal problems uh, but with these switches I don't know would I put the plus volts to where it says here 5 volts I don't know I'd, and especially when it says that you know um, it can sort of damage your control if you get it wrong I just decided on uh, well sticking with uh, normally open and uh, wiring them parallel so that's what I went for
So in the um, controller software, there's some Gerbil settings here. Like I say, it's um, quite intuitive really is this. So you don't really need to know these um, dollar values. Um, you just set whatever the value should be here and it sets the uh, dollar values accordingly. Um, so these these are settings. I went for a custom machine because obviously it's a custom machine that I've got here and um, I, I just set them similar to an existing machine and um, in here dollar um, for invert stepper enable pin um, not too sure why you need that but anyway <laughs> um, obviously we don't want to invert limit pins um, because they're normally open and um, hard limits enabled so I've enabled that so that sets dollar twenty one is equal to one I also set soft limits as well um, so I enable those and I'll show you uh, that that's um, a bit of belt and braces really for me and uh, various settings here now in my last video I um, realized that calibration wasn't right and I, I read somewhere that um, for these ball screws that I've got um, the steps per millimeter come at, come in at uh, 320 and I think this was set at 190 something um, so I set these at 320 for all three axes and then I went through the calibration routine and it's, it's spot on so I'm happy that it's calibrated correctly and uh, these are all defaults from the, from a, another one now what I also did for soft limits is on the x-axis I worked out that it's just over 300 millimeters of travel um, so I put 300 in there also the y-axis is just over 300 so I put 300 in there and the z-axis is about 45 I think um, so I put 42 in there and uh, the the advantage of having soft limits is if my limit switch is on the far end of the um, axes were to fail then um, well you wouldn't even get there because the soft limits, soft limits are going to kick in before it even touches any of the uh, far end switches so like I say a bit of belt and braces so um, in here you can back up your settings so just click on there and uh, save them so you can restore them later on if you need to using that so going back to the control so currently here the, we've got uh, the x-axis at 99 millimeters uh, y at 130 and uh, z at minus 16 so if I click on home all uh, it'll home it down to uh, zero point Perfect. And this is the wiring. Um, ignore this for the moment, that's the USB connection. That'll be over here later on with the laptop. Um, I bolted the controller onto the back um, of the machine and um, power supply I've just tied on here um, with some zip ties and uh, it's fairly tidy is the uh, the wiring and, uh, I've got some top cable clips off eBay 
Uh, but all in all, it's uh, pretty neat, I think. And also, if I uh, try and exceed uh, the soft limits, the alarm should kick in. Uh, so if I set the travel to be 100 millimeters and I uh, move the uh, Y axis back. Uh, it's just kicked in there. Doing that 200. Oh, maybe because it's 300. So if I set it to 10, I'll be able to get a bit closer. So I've got it to 280, 290, 300, it kicks in. And uh, likewise on uh, the uh, X, for example. So I'm at 260, 270, 280, 290, and the alarm's kicked in. And now likewise the uh, Z, hopefully. <laughs> Give it a try. I'll go down in one. Thirty-three, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-seven. It actually um, deducts five millimeters off the actual soft limit that you've set. I don't know the reason behind that, but that's the way it is. Um, so if I hold all, You can see there I've made a bracket on the 3D printer, there's another one that fits there. I'll tell you a bit about that. So this is um, a drawing of the bracket uh, created by Olivier and um, it's to be made in metal and um, these are tapped to accept bolts to attach the uh, front bracket um, like that. And um, I'm sort of running short of metal at the moment and uh, for me that's sort of a bit of a machining job uh, so what I decided to do was to uh, redesign it slightly um, in Fusion 360 and rather than have sort of uh, threaded bits here for bolts just to extend these out a little bit so I can put um, a, a, a nut at the end and bolt through and that's what I've come up with so you can see there holes to accept I think M6 bolts and um, I can just put some nuts in there so these bolts are the actual machine and then the front can connect like that now that is uh, I printed that 50% fill and it's very very rigid both pieces are that took five hours to print just over about, about five and a half I think I think that took probably two or three hours, um, but really good result. And that's it with the spindle attached. I got this from uh, Vivo and uh, it's a 24,000 RPM one and it came from a UK warehouse which is pretty good. Uh, so what I'll do is um, at some point in the future I'll uh, put these uh, designs on Thingiverse so they can be downloaded um, if you want to uh, follow a similar sort of path. Well I'm uh, gradually getting there with this uh, little machine and uh, the only outstanding items um, are to connect the spindle up to this VFD so I'll cover that in my next video and I need to uh, sort out a table, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do uh, about a table 
uh, whether I go metal or wood, I'm not too sure. Uh, but anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I hope to see you later.